Hi everyone, this is Jason from ServiceNow. In this short video, I'm just going to show you a little demonstration about change approval policies. This is a new feature that was introduced in Madrid uh, some months ago, earlier this year. And uh, not everyone is, uh, have seen this before, so I thought I'd just give you a little demonstration about how this works. Because uh, previously, prior to Madrid, change approval policies worked uh, slightly differently. So if we go to the workflow editor in ServiceNow, and we'll just take a look at the change request normal policy here. Uh, in previous versions of ServiceNow, we had an activity right here uh, that was basically just a regular uh, group approval uh, that we saw here, one of these activity types approval group, where in for normal change requests, it would be a, a technical approval for the first approval, and in the second one, it would be a cab approval. But instead, uh, from Madrid, we've got uh, this one here now called change approval policy. This is actually a new activity type that was introduced in ServiceNow in the Madrid version. So if you go to uh, your list of activities here, you'll see a new category here called change policy. Now there's only one in there, one activity in there, and this is the one that we're actually uh, looking at here now and just see what's going on inside here. Basically, it is just a reference to an approval policy here. So we're actually gonna take a look at these approval policies in just a second. Basically, it just gives you a lot more flexibility and makes it a lot easier to implement different kinds of approval policies and procedures for different kinds of change requests without having to encapsulate all of this in a, a regular approval activity in your workflow. Um, we also have a field here called a policy input. Now, at the moment, we don't have anything uh, in here, uh, but we could actually use this uh, to reference um, other fields or other uh, variables that we specify in our change policies, which we'll see in just a minute. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's take a look at this change, uh, this normal change policy right now and see what's going on there. So basically, the deal is, is that when the workflow comes to the assess state here uh, for the first round of approvals here in your change request, it's going to kickstart this change approval policy, which is then going to call this normal change policy right here. So let's go ahead and open up that policy here. So if we go to change, change approval policies here, so this is completely new uh, in the Madrid version of ServiceNow. Well, actually, if I just uh, remove uh, those few letters there, and if we go down to the change uh, policy here, we've actually got two modules here, change approval policies and so-called approval definitions. So let's have a look at change approval policies first. Uh, as the name suggests, they're basically policies or procedures or rules in which uh, that you create uh, to determine uh, who needs to, well, what will trigger an approval? Under what conditions do we need to have an approval? Uh, and which state uh, of the workflow? What kinds of workflows need to have an approval? So these are basically our triggers, you could say. So if we open up this one here that was re referenced in the workflow that we just came from, normal change policy, and have a look at that one, we'll see here basically this uh, policy is governed by two uh, related lists here. One's called policy inputs, and the other one is called decisions. If we look at policy inputs, this is basically your conditions. When are we going to trigger a particular kind of decision that we reference here? Um, so at the moment, we've just got two here. Now, every time you create a new policy input or a new approval policy, rather, you'll always have access to this so-called change request uh, table here. So if we open up that, uh, all we're saying is that uh, this is uh, a reference to actually the change request record. And uh, this is kind of a, a variable that we can call later in our decisions, which we'll have a look at in just a minute. So let me go back and let's have a, a look at this uh, second one here. This one's a little bit uh, unusual here because if we look at it, you see it's almost kind of like a true false field and we've just given it the name manager approval. Uh, but, uh, and then it's uh, manager approved rather. And in the column name, we've got manager approved here. It's 
Uh, some of you may be wondering what's going on there. Basically, that is just a, a variable that we've uh, created here that we can reference in a script in our change policy action in the uh, workflow. So uh, what we're actually doing, we're not actually using uh, um, this right now. We're actually just creating a variable for it. So if we come to the decision related list now, and if we have a look at the one for assess technical approvals, because it's often best just to explain these things uh, with uh, the use of examples. So this is basically our first level or our first yeah, uh, approval that we have in our normal change request. So whenever you get an instance of ServiceNow, developer instance, a brand new instance of ServiceNow, you'll have some standard workflows for change requests. There's one for a normal change requests and this one, as many of you will know, has a two-step approval process. One is uh, your technical approval, uh, which is uh, this one that we see here right now, and the other one is the CAV approval. So instead of having uh, the assignment group for the change request referenced in the workflow activity, uh, we've actually got it here. So we're basically saying when the uh, change request state uh, is assessed, we are going to use or use this approval uh, definition right here. And this so-called answer here, this approval definition, is this one right over here, approval definition, okay, which we'll take a look at in just a minute. Okay, so in other words, this is basically our first uh, step uh, in the approval process. Uh, but before we take a look at that uh, approval definition, if we just go back and have a look at uh, the cab approval decision here, we'll see it looks a little bit different. Uh, basically, we're just saying when the change request state is authorized. Uh, and in that situation, we are going to use a different approval definition, uh, the so-called cab approval definition again referenced in this uh, module over here so let's take a look at these uh, approval definitions and see what's going on there let's have a look at the um, uh, assignment group approval that we use for the first approval so basically we've got uh, a situation here where we've got uh, well we're, where we can define what kind of approval we want to have and here we've got a few different options. We can just flat out approve and reject uh, these change requests. So we could have different conditions there for the change request, um, for different kinds of change requests, for different kinds of configuration item classes or whatever. And then we could just have an automatic approval. Otherwise, we could have a user or a group approval like we've got here. And here we've got an approver source. This uh, approver source is the uh, change request at the moment. So in other words, we're looking for a field in that change request record that is going to be improved uh, to send it to. And this field, in our case, is going to be the assignment group. And we're just going to wait for the first person to respond to that, to either approve or reject that change request. Uh, otherwise, if we select uh, here, approval definition, uh, then we can just specify some other kind of group outside of anything that's recorded in that change request. But you'll see here already that uh, you can actually do quite a few things here uh, that in the previous uh, uh, approval group workflow activity for change requests, you would have had the script. So things like um, percentage of users, you know, which is quite a common uh, use case uh, that lots of our customers have. Um, to do that, you would have had to script that in that workflow approval activity. Uh, but here we can just say percentage of users and we could just say as when a majority approve, approves, 51% uh, or whatever, then uh, we go ahead. Otherwise we could just say when 1% approves. If we have 100 uh, users in the group, then we only need one person approving that or rejecting it for that to be considered a, a valid approval or rejection. So uh, yeah. Uh, that's basically how uh, these new change policies work uh, in ServiceNow. So basically, we start with a change approval policy. Uh, we set conditions for when uh, we want to trigger an approval. And those uh, approval policies then reference a so-called approval definition, which is what we've got right here. So rather than, if I go back to the workflow editor, uh, defining all of this in an approval workflow activity, uh, like we used to prior to Madrid, We've now moved that approval 
into these two different uh, tables here or these two modules the change approval policies uh, oops let me just leave that change approval policies um, where we have our triggers or our variables that we can define um, and then in our decisions um, but maybe while I'm here uh, if I just open that um, assess technical approvals what we could also do here and this is where these variables that we just saw uh, come into play if I add another condition here I've got basically uh, two options really uh, I can reference something that's in the change request that was actually one of the so-called variables that we defined before so at the moment it's not really I can't really can do anything I can specify a change request but what I need to do is come down to show related fields and then specify some kind of field in that particular change request for example uh, I could reference the configuration item and from there I can look at the configuration item class or whatever that's one option the other option is to if I just come down here and remove those related fields and get back to what we originally had is to go to this so-called manager approved this was also one of the variables that we saw um, previously let me open up another tab here let me come back just so you absolutely clear what I'm talking about so if we go to change approval policies here oops change approval policies uh, normal change policy it's this first related list here these policy inputs our so-called inputs or variables that we want to use or reference later uh, in our decisions so you can create uh, any kind of variable that you hear here that you like and so we've got one here called manager approved at the moment it's just a true false field um, and if we look at it uh, here um, it's not actually doing anything we don't actually know what this is actually doing or how this is actually calculated I mean we get an idea of what it is by the name of it but what's going on here manager approved is true we've just kind of created this variable right here I mean I could call this whatever I like um, you know it doesn't really matter uh, but uh, here it's uh, being referenced so we've got basically got a variable here that we're saying is true or false uh, but this variable in our particular case is actually referenced in one of these approval definitions I believe let me just check here if it is the cab approval one or not uh, actually I don't think it was that one it was we do have uh, an example in here uh, change requests uh, now what, what am I talking about I'm in the wrong position uh, I need to go not here um, to the the policies we need to go to this workflow activity here so we saw here in the change approval policies for the technical approval and we actually didn't have uh, anything uh, here in the policy input so here you can define your own imports here as well calculate your own imports and this is basically what you're referencing uh, in that other table and let me go to the this one here the second approval that we've got here yeah so yeah this is basically uh, where we've referenced that manager approved variable that we defined before so basically we're just kind of writing out a little script here to determine has a manager already approved this change request or not and on the basis of that we're going to calculate a value for this variable manager approved which we are then able to call um, in our uh, decisions here to say if the manager approved is true or false okay so in other words you can create your own variables you can in the workflow activity uh, you can calculate the values for those variables and then use them in, in your decision making process here so uh, hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight into the configuration underneath the hood for change policies, change approval policies in ServiceNow uh, from Madrid. As I said, it's a new feature in Madrid. And um, yeah, so if you are looking at this and you're wondering, uh, looking at the workflow and uh, coming here and going, what is going on with this change approval policy? Uh, I can't see any assignment group. I can't see who's going to approve this change request or not right here and it's true you can't you have to look at these new change approval policies so hopefully that's given you a little bit of insight you're a little bit clearer on that and uh, that's all for me so uh, good luck with your work and see you next time